we now come to a concept the concept of surface tension in case of liquids right you must have seen that many a times on a liquid surface certain insects just sit down without sinking <clears throat> okay without sinking or if you put some kind of some small weight on it say say very carefully if you put a razor blade on it then it then it, it is just like that, right? It, it floats. Feather, fine, but I am not saying about feather because, because feather will always float. A leaf will always float. That is due to something else. That is due to your Archimedes principle of buoyancy, right? That's a different thing altogether. <coughs> the things which could sink, they do not sink. For example, if you if you suddenly drop a drop a razor blade into a glass full of water, it'll it'll go to the bottom of it. But if you carefully keep it over the surface, it just hangs there. So okay, so and <coughs> without even a part of it going below the below the fluid, because because had it gone gone below, then you would have imagined that it is the buoyant force that is acting, right? So, so in these cases, the the water is behaving like a stretched membrane. It, it's it's like a membrane. I'll not say stretched, okay, <clears throat> but like a membrane, like, like like something that that can support some some weight over it, right? And that support is not due to the upward thrust that we normally associate with buoyancy, right? <clears throat> there are many other phenomena. Okay, so, so what I'm trying to, to say is, is water behaves like, like a membrane say supports a blade, okay, supports insects and a razor blade over the surface. <clears throat> then we see that the, the, there's some other phenomena that say certain certain fluids they spread on the surface while while things like like mercury they they form into a droplet right so mercury <coughs> mercury forms a drop while while some other fluids while some fluids spread on a surface. There's other phenomena. Suppose, suppose you are on the side of a beach or, or say in a river with a sandy bed and you, you try to take out some sand outfit. So sand while coming is okay, but the moment you pull it out of the water, it kind of feels as if it is shrinking in your hand, mm -hmm. right? It, it kind of shrinks in your hand. Have you, have you ever uh, seen that? Mm -hmm. Okay, or, or, or take a, take a, <coughs> take a fistful of, handful of sand and put your hand inside water and try to bring it out. It, you feel as if, as if it, it, it is trying to grip you, okay? It's trying to come closer. Mm -hmm. So, 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 sand clings towards each other when brought out of, when brought out of water, water. Okay, <clears throat> then you must have seen a thing called capillary action. Have you observed it? A thin, thin tube in your chemistry lab. Okay, you put it inside water. <coughs> you put it inside water. What happens? You, you, you'll see
you'll see that it rises above it, it, it rises above the fluid surface okay or if it was mercury if it was mercury if it was mercury if it was mercury then you'll find the surface dipped below it okay dipped below it like that okay so capillary reaction <clears throat> and we have studied it in bio that it is due to these thin capillaries that the water tends to rise and goes to the goes to the different parts of the trees and that coupled with transpiration right it's not only that there is a suction pressure that that, that is acting at the top due to the evaporation right that coupled with this this is able to send the water to even even to red giants which are say 100 meters tall right more than that <clears throat> so 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 that or 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 <clears throat> say if you if you throw water or, or raindrops they fall they fall as a as a sphere okay so raindrops falling as raindrops falling as Sphere. Hmm? Huh? They, they are they are they are spherical in shape, right? What I'm trying to say is, all these phenomena, the above phenomena, is due to surface tension. The property of fluids <clears throat> of fluids called surface tension we'll soon come to understand what is surface tension and then you'll understand why they should occur due to the phenomena called surface tension so so first of all i have cited the cases which are otherwise inexplicable but they are due to due to the the concept of surface tension <clears throat> okay now let us try to understand why or what is surface tension first of all right let us let us try to take some liquid in a beaker okay so it is something like this and let us talk about a molecule <coughs> which is here right we know that that a liquid forms because the molecules of the gases they start coming together and and they start having some intermolecular attraction and is this attraction which holds the molecules together however not so strongly together that they are not able to slip past each other okay that is what gives rise to viscosity so what happens this molecule here is attracted by molecules on all all the sides yes <clears throat> if all of them get repelled then it will be a gas then it will become a gas okay 
so it is this attraction so a, so the net force on a, on a molecule which is here is zero okay so net force on a molecule deep inside the liquid deep below the surface why deep i'll tell you and when i say deep below the surface it's about 100 atoms deep about 100 atoms deep does it differ for dextrose we'll see that we'll see that yes deep so so is zero there's no force okay okay now what happens since the particles of the liquid are in motion continuous motion and if this particle starts rising say towards the top and as it starts nearing the surface then what happens the number of molecules above it are not the same as the number of molecules below, below it <coughs> so say somewhere here though it is pulled I, I, I could have shown it here but, but since uh, this will interfere with this it starts feeling a force like that you understand there is an upward force but that is very minuscule right that is very very small that is very very small and and what is the net force on this particle is it zero no, no. now you understand why i was talking about particles deep down because the particles which near the surface the force felt by them is in the downward direction why see these two forces will cancel okay the horizontal components of these two forces these forces will again cancel but their vertical components will add now so there is a net force okay net force on a particle which starts nearing the surface starts becoming becoming higher and higher uh, uh, unidirectional I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry it becomes unidirectional so so there is a net force there is a net force on the particles which which are near the surface however for the particles <coughs> near the surface there is a net force for the particles near the surface there is a net force acting in the downward direction acting in the downward direction so say from from a depth of about 100 molecules deep and if it is still trying to move up it it is being pulled down by the by the particles of the fluid you understand hmm? now if in spite of that this particle is able to travel to the top it means there is some force that is acting on this particle and that force is that force is see this is the force this is the this is the net force that the particle was feeling and still instead of coming down if the particle has gone up <coughs> okay it has moved up up not 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 above the surface okay so there must be a counter force shown by the green vector that must be acting on that particle do you understand that? 
दैट मीन सम एक्सटर्नल सोर्स हैज डन वर्क ऑन इट एंड इफ एन एक्सटर्नल सोर्स डज अ वर्क ऑन समथिंग देन दैट वर्क डन गेट्स टोर्ड इन टू द पार्टिकल एज एनर्जी यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट so the energy of the particles at the top is more than the energy of the particles in the in the bulk in in uh, deep below we understand that okay okay so 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 let me first come to that so <clears throat> since these particles since the the above particle particle i mean to say the one with a net force in the downward direction a net force in the downward direction okay still move some some yeah where does the force come from yeah so from where will that uh, that external thing will come that comes from the ambient energy that it already has so it keeps on keeps on soaking that energy right from the ambient ambient heat energy <clears throat> right since the above particle still moves up there must be an external force there must be an external force acting on it there must be an external force acting on it right due to the work done by this external force the particles at the top are more energetic are more energetic or or have possess more energy possess more energy energy than those deep below and by deep you understand hmm we are we are talking about a thin 100 100 atom layer and the atom layer is hardly hardly a, a picometer that kind of thing we are talking about right now now the the, the particles <clears throat> at the top they have more energy right okay all the particles coming to the top so what what will the fluid try to do it will try to reduce the area why why will it try to reduce the area so that the total energy of the fluid goes down the fluids at the top will get squeezed together why any system to become more stable will try to have the least amount of energy okay now how can it have least amount of energy it will try to it will try to oppose the particles that are coming to the top so it will try, try to shrink together that, yeah, exactly. why it will not allow more particles to come up the energy in the particles on the surface won't allow other particles to come up because the, the fluid as a whole to to the, the all the systems they are trying to attain an a, 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 a more stable a more stable form right now more is the number of particles more is the number of particles at the 